Perfect. Okay, welcome to Reinventing RxJS. My name is Max. Uh, I'm a principal engineer at Dazon. So this is what we're going to do today. So first of all, intro introduction. Why do we need an, an introduction? Raise your hand if you know what RxJS is. Nice. I love that. Second question. Raise your hand if you're using RxJS in production. Ooh, I really like that. So an introduction will be short, but it's needed to be all on the same page. And then we're going to deep dive into reinventing RxJS. And actually, the deep dive was the third one. We're going to talk about scheduler. What a scheduler is and why are they are so powerful. So let's begin with introduction. The first thing I wanted to, 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 to talk about is what is the definition of RxJS? What is RxJS? So first of all, it's part of a bigger idea of the ReactiveX family. ReactiveX family is a group of libraries and solution for different technologies and different languages that, so we're not talking only about RxJS here in particular. We're talking about much more. You can use RxJS in Java, in Kotlin, in uh, uh, Swift as well, I think. There are many, many languages su supported. And if you read, uh, the definition, this is the most explicit, uh, the, the, the most simple definition I was able to find, and it took me a lot because the subject is not that linear, it's not that straightforward. So the definition that I found was an API, so what is RxJS? It's an API for asynchronous programming with observable streams. So if you're using RxJS in, in, in production, you're thinking, yeah, okay, it actually um, it actually summarizes very well what RxJS is. But if you've never seen RxJS and you are at this talk listening to me right, right now, these two lines, they doesn't mean anything. Because what is an API in JavaScript? Is it an internal? Am I calling something? Is it an external API? Am I doing re requests here? What the heck is asynchronous pro pro programming, by the way? And I'm not even talking about observable streams because no, no idea. So what I wanted to... Um, to show you is a picture of me when I was six uh, with a beautiful train. I don't even know where this, this train is, but I love this picture. And when, when, when I was six or seven, I used to uh, dis discover how things were working by dismantling them, by breaking them apart, by finding what was inside. I'm pretty sure at least some of you will re remember when we wanted to see what was inside. And at least I was, uh, for example, th my uh, best or worst experience was with a VHS re re recorder. It was already broken, but I completely de disassembled it. I had like 200 pieces all over my, 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 my room. And for me, it was a way to discover what's inside. Um, I wasn't able to put it back together, but that's another di this, this, this discussion. And since I grew up a little bit from that step, today I want to apply the same concept, but moving that a little, a little bit forward, one step forward. So we're going to see what's inside the library, what's inside RxJS, and on top of that, we're going to reinvent RxJS. That's why reinventing the wheel. So we're going to see how it works by reinventing it. We're going to see the strength and the weakness of the library, and of the approaches that the library um, offers to us as the, 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 the developers by reinventing it from scratch. So reinventing the wheel by taking things apart. That was the end of the introduction, I promise you, it was, it was short. So reinventing RxJS. First thing I want to show you is, let's forget about the de de definition. It's not something that we would like to have at the beginning. We are developers, we want to see the, the code. This is RxJS 6 syntax. If you are used with 5 syntax, it's not that, that, that far. So it will sound fa familiar in, in a bit. So let, 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 let's go through it. We are importing two things, uh, three things, sorry, from map and filter from RxJS library. We are using immediately from, which is a function. Almost everything is a function here. And we are passing an array of five, e of five elements, sorry. 
the output of this one is then uh, we are calling a method which is available inside the output of from, which is pipe, which contains a bunch of functions. These functions are called O operators. In fact, they are re re required from the RxJS slash operators path here. And those pipe functions are going to be applied one after another one. What does that, that mean? It means that with the first number, one, this number one here is going to go through the pipe, you get why the, the name, and it's going to go through the map function, which is going to transform my one into a two, because I'm adding one to that. And then I'm filtering something, so I'm getting rid of some of the stuff that is going down to the pipe. And then in case I'm reaching the next level, I'm subtracting one. Not really a useful ex example, but it, it shows you that, first of all, the pipe operators are uh, are arbitrary. We can add more pipe pipe all operators. We can remove them. We can realign re 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 reassign the position of them, rearrange them, and we're gonna see why the this is important to under un understand. But all those numbers will will come down to the pipe and passing through all the operators. So one is gonna go through, two is gonna go through everything, three and so on and so forth. What's gonna happen next? This is defined at this stage. So we are doing observable.subscribe. Observable is this guy here coming out from my from and pipe magic duo. Dot subscribe is actually telling us RxJS how I want to react with, with to those changes. So the first function, subscribe accept three parameters. There are three, three, three functions. The first one is the function that is going to get called every single time a single value goes down the, 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 the pipe. So one is gonna go down the pipe, and the first function is gonna get called. Then second, second number, second function, uh, sorry, second number, again, first function, third number, et cetera, et cetera. The second parameter is gonna get called if something bad happened, if we have an error of any kind. And the third one is gonna get called when all the numbers are done, when my uh, job is done. So in the console log, uh, you are going to see odd one, odd three, odd five, and completed. Because we are filtering, because we are, we are mapping. It's not truly important, the output. Uh, the important things to, uh, to, to grasp here are the way RSJS is um, assembly is, sh is forcing us to show, to put the, the code into a way that sometimes could be not familiar, especially at the be be beginning. So which are the first impressions? So we see the code, uh, maybe for some of you it was the, the first time. What are you thinking right now? So first, first of all, the syntax is library specific. Uh, it's not something that uh, you see that every, every, every day, and unless you are really into functional and you love pipe operator or compose, those kind of things are not super uh, related to JavaScript itself. They are what the library suggests you to use. Secondly, explicit subscription. So at the end, I'm telling as, is it still working? Not anymore. Uh, okay. How about this one? One, two, three. Is it working? No? Better? One, two, three. I'm going to have to live code later, so it's going to be a little bit more challenging. <laughs> yeah? Is it working? OK. I'll continue like this. Please raise your hand if you don't hear anything. <laughs> Can you hear me in the back? I'm going to scream a little bit. So explicit subscription. So we are telling to the library, this is what I wanted to happen after all the pipes, after all the numbers are going, are going to go through, the, through the, the pipes. And then observable. Observable is something that is right now in TC39 stage one, uh, which if you don't know, it's a place where we, we all together discuss about the new feature of the language. Hello, we are back. And um, so that, 
what does that mean? It means that today, the syntax is library specific, but if we do the same talk in one year time, this could be JavaScript. This could be plain JavaScript uh, features, like the observable uh, that is presented right now. And also, we have pipeline operator, which is very similar to the pipe method that we saw in RSJS. So syntax is very library specific today, but in one year, two years time, it could be something really different. So let's reinvent RxJS. Uh, I need a little bit of attention right now. So on the left hand side, I hope everyone could see that, we have the same code that I showed you at the beginning, which is this one. On the right hand side, I have something. Uh, I, I am running the file on the left hand side. So if I change something here, like if I comment this out and if I save, on the right hand side, you can see, you can see a lot of uh, stuff. The right hand side is not tru truly Im Im important. So the w uh, let's focus on the white side. Okay, so what we're gonna do is that I promise you we're going to reinvent RxJS. So let's start with the from method. What we're gonna do is we're going to comment from and we're going to create our from uh, function. So from, uh, I should probably disable the linter, otherwise it's gonna get crazy. So I was saying const from. So from is a function that accepts one parameter, which is the initial data, and is going to return a object that contains a dot pipe. So I have a pipe method, which contains a bunch of pipe functions, which again returns something that, oops, that is going to contain a method called subscribe. So right now, it's a little bit of boilerplate. All of this is just to make something that is compatible with RxJS API. I haven't done anything useful so far. So the subscribe method accept uh, three functions that we're gonna call on next, on error, and on complete. So subscribe method, let's be consistent, and um, do do do. Okay, here we are. So a quick win that we can get is immediately calling the onComplete, and hopefully this will work. On the right hand side, you will see the white completed message. So I haven't done anything interesting uh, so, so far. So I just replicate the form shape, and I'm calling the onComplete method. So nothing interesting so far. Uh, let's start with uh, the initial data, because we have the initial data, we need to start working with that. So I'm going to create, a, uh, let's get some space so it's easy to read. So const, uh, let's do data observable, uh, bear, with, bear with me one, one second, is an object which contains a subscribe method, and this subscribe method contains a uh, next. Sorry, this is a function. And this subscribe method, what it does is gonna call initial data for each next. So why the hell I'm doing this? I'm doing this because with this little helper function, I'm able to do something like data observable dot subscribe. You see this subscribe method is coming back again. We saw that outside and now we are seeing that inside. So the subscribe method this time is gonna, is gonna be used with on next. So if we save this one, we see that on the right, I'm gonna put it on the top, we are simply going through all the elements from one to five uh, thanks to the subscribe method. So why subscribe is important, we're gonna see that late, late, later, but for now, our mind should be set in, a, should have a mindset that the outer uh, contract, which is with the dot subscribe, this is what the API exposes to us as a developer, it's very similar to something that is going on inside. So we have dot subscribe outside and inside. So I'm going to create to abstract this data observable a li li little bit. So I'm going to create a function called create observable, which accepts one parameter, which is the producer. And this function, what it does, it simply 
let me start with what I wanted to achieve. So my data observable, I wanted to be uh, generated with my function called create observable, and I'm going to pass you the uh, pro producer to that function, which is similar to what we already did. So we do initial data for each x. So since I want to call you call this data observable in this way, my create observable will have to return an object, again, that contains, again, a method called subscribe, which has next, and we do producer next. Okay, so if I haven't done big, any big mistake, I can remove this one, and when I save, I haven't changed anything so, so, so far. Okay, so it's still one, two, three. I created an ob obstruction that I'm going to need in uh, in a second. So since this is a good obstruction, abstraction, I can take it out. Uh, I can probably format this in a better way. Okay, my code is still working. I can still save. I have the list of the of of the things running, but we are ignoring something. We are ignoring the pipe functions so far. So in order to work with the pipe function, what we need to do is we need to recreate map, filter, and again map. So we, don't, we just need to create map and filter. So the very important bit to understand here is that as soon as we remove this one, our code is going to break immediately. So always start simple. So I'm going to start just with map. Of course, and I'm going to save, and map is not, gonna, is not uh, def de de defined, so my code should break. Easy. Uh, let's create our map function. This is my map function. But be before diving into the details of the all operators, I want you to focus one second on how I'm going to create this map and filter of um, all operators. So we already say, said that each of them could be rearranged with uh, a different order. So I can call another map first, I can call another filter, I can have multiple operators. So it's important that the contract between the previous operator and the next op operator is somehow maintained, in somehow respected. Or otherwise, I can't rearrange if map always returns something that only filter can use, while instead I should be able to use uh, five map operators, one after another one. So the contract should be always the, the same. But what is this contract? So I'm going to use a slide here, which is this one. So how we are going to concaten concatenate all, all operators. So each single time, we're going to have a current observable, which is this guy here that is going to be chained with the previous observable and with the next observable. So the previous one is called source observable, and the next one is next ob ob observable. So if I create this chain, what's going to happen is that at the next iteration, so on the next operator, I'm going to have the source observable of the new one, which is the next of the previous one. So what am I doing? I'm chaining this operator one with another one. And with this structure, with this is an overview structure, what I can do is that I can rearrange this how many times I, I want. So this is quite beautiful. When you have a chain, you can re remove a piece of the chain and reattach it at the beginning. And the chain is still going to work. So we're going to apply this concept in 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 the code. Let's go back. So map function. We saw, let's, oh, not, not you. So let's keep a reminder for ourselves that we have the source observable, which is going to be connected with the current observable, which is going to be connected with the next, next observable. Observable. OK, so this is the con connection. The code of this one will look a little bit ugly, so you have to trust me a little bit on this one. So first of all, we are returning a function uh, which accepts as a first parameter source observable. This is mandatory because we have to chain them, one with another one. And when I return this one, I'm actually going to create the current observable with our helper function. You remember our create observable? We are reusing it. And this time, the producer, so the part that produces all my data, is uh, actually a function 
that has one parameter, which is destination next. We're going to see that in one, in one second. And inside, what we do, this is the core of the whole thing, is I'm going to do source observable dot subscribe. Subscribe of what? This is my value, finally. We are reaching the end of the nested thing. And inside this subscribe, I'm actually applying my, my function. So I have a new value, which is the output of map function of value. I'm going to re repeat a few steps on the, this one. And then I'm going to call destination next new value. And then, before I forget it, I'm return current Ob ob observable. Oops. So we are almost there yet, but I want to highlight a couple of things. So y you see how we are chaining the source with the current and the current with the next one. The chain actually happens here source observable dot subscribe because what am I doing with the current observable I'm subscribing to the previous observable to the source one so I'm the current I'm subscribing to the one be before uh, if something good happens or like after I apply my math function which could be any function I go to do the next one so this is the, the chain I'm connecting the current one with the previous and, uh, uh, and the next one. And this is totally abstracted in a way that I could pass any map function. In my example, the map function was simply adding one, but it could transform data in many other, other ways. The idea to grasp from this one is that the chaining of the op operators. Let's see it working, because right now we, we, we created the map function, but we are not really using it. So in order to use it, because I, as you can see from the output from the right hand side, is still one, two, three, four, 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 five. So in order to, to use it, I need to use my pipe functions. So my pipe functions, I need to loop through the pipe function. But actually, I forgot about one thing. Before looping through the pipe function, I'm going to create a um, variable with let, which is current ob observable, which is perfectly fine with the idea of chaining. So my current observable is going to, chain, to change with time. So at the beginning, the initial observable is data observable. And you should start seeing why I overcomplicated the initial data with the data observable, because now I'm able to write this. And the dot subscribe interface is available on all those observables. So the first one is uh, that um, data observable. And then for each of the pipe functions, which are the one passed through pipe method, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do pipe func and I'm going to reassign current observable with pipe function of the previous current observable. So what am I doing here, actually? Here, I'm applying the pipe method of to the current one to generate the next one. And this is how the chain moves forward. This is how we're able to chain all the, all, the, all the pieces. And when I do this, the only change that I need to, to do here in the data ob ob observable is that I need to reassign this one, to rewrite this one to current ob ob observable. And uh, this one is is going to produce something. So on the right hand side, I don't have one, two, three, four, five anymore, but my map function got applied. So I have two, three, four, five, and six. And this is working in a way that is pretty abstracted from the, fr from, uh, the, the fact that I'm using plus one. Because first of all, I can add as many map uh, as, a, as I want, and the output is still going to be the same. But the function could be anything. I could add hello and will generate some stuff on the right. So it's totally agnostic of whatever is the, the function. OK, so we saw how we are chaining those things. We saw map. Now we're going to do the filter, which is going to look very, very similar. So you can relax your brain a little bit, just a little bit, not that much. So function filter. Function filter is going to work exactly in the same way. So I'll have the filter function here. I'm going to return again the current, um, the source observable. I, I could have copied and pasted the same impl in implementation. I'm just not doing it because I hate when live coding people just co 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 copy and paste because I don't understand what's going on. 
So let me define again the current observable, which is defined through the create observable method, and I'm passing destination next. Uh, that helps me helps me define source observable dot subscribe. Uh, subscribe, thank you, auto completion value. So this is the only bit that is going to be different. The only things that is going to be different is this part. And so far, let me put both of them. Uh, I, I can't because too big. So this is the only difference. You have to trust me. So the, co uh, the difference is that here I'm uh, creating a filter operator. So what am I doing is that I'm checking if the filter function applied to my value is some kind true or true t. And if that's true, I'm going to go next. So I'm going to do what I did before, destination next, value. Uh, before I forget, let me return current observable. Again, same exact thing. The only difference is these three lines. So instead of mapping the value, I'm filtering out stuff that I don't care about. So and if we put all of this back to get, to get together, and if I don't remove line accidentally, this hopefully will give us the, um, the output that we were expecting. So right now we have one, two, three, and five on the right, and I can add as many of this map and filter as I want, because they are all chained with the previous one and the, and the next one. So to recap quickly what happened. So we created a little bit of boilerplate, so this stuff is far from interesting. I'm just creating something that is the same as the API. And then I created I, uh, an abstraction for creating observable to which I'm, that I used with my initial data. I a little bit overcomplicated my life there because, what, why? Because I can do something like this. I can have a common interface, so an object that has a dot subscribe method that allows me to have those kind of chain, chaining of all operators. At the end of everything, I'm doing current observable dot subscribe with the next value, job done. So this, this, this is how we can reinvent our XJS in our code, starting from, uh, from, from, from nothing. And let's see what we learn with this, with this one. So I, I think I re repeated the word observables a lot of time. In reality, we are talking about something called streams, or, or all these little parts which we compose together, and all the operators that we are chaining, they are called streams. That, so you start remembering the first, uh, mm, the first explanation, the first sentence, that was observable streams. Those are the, the, the streams we, uh, we were talking about. And all those streams, they share the same standard contract, which is the dot subscribed. It may feel something that, yeah, it's just a dot subscribed method, no, no big deal. But it's actually allowing us, and if you have a look inside the RxJS library itself, to having all those pieces connected together. And then it's so easy to create custom operators. We did that together in 10 minutes, more or less, so you can create your own. And if you go and use the real RxJS library, it's even easier. So with my crop implementation, it takes seven line no lines of code, eight lines. With RxJS, you just import the boilerplate, which is already done. You just import a function to create a custom operators, and you do whatever you want. Don't start creating all operators, all custom operators, because RxJS has quite a big amount of operators. And then lazy evaluation. This is something that we didn't spend much time on it. But lazy evaluation means that if I don't do the, sub the final subscribe, so this one, nothing is going to get triggered. If I comment out this one, you can see on the right, right hand side, now you can probably see better, there, there, there is nothing. So what does that mean? That all of what we've done before is like truly creating a pipe, a pipe system, imagine with water, but if you don't open the, the tap, the water is not going to go through, and nothing is starting. And that's really powerful, because if we were doing something really heavily on our ma machines from a computational point, this is not going to start until me, as a developer, I decide, well, 
when all of this starts. And that's quite powerful. Lazy evaluation, and last but not least, all of this is synchronous. We, we, we didn't have any set timeout or any, some, any request animation frame or any promise. So all of these happened in synchronous way. And I can demonstrate, hopefully, that this is synchronous just by adding a console log at the end. Log. Let's see if I know how to spell sync, probably not. So this, the, the sync here, let me add. The, the sync here, it's happening after I have all this stuff. And that's quite beautiful because synchronous for us, for developers, means that I'm able to debug way easier. When it's asynchronous, there is something that goes somewhere and at some point it re re returns. It may be now, it may be in two minutes, in two milli milliseconds, but there is this kind of communication. If it's synchronous, it's like one, two, three, four, five. You can put stick a debugger somewhere and it's not gonna go from two to two to three. So for um for debugging purposes, it's super useful. But RxJS is way more than, than that. It's synchronous by default, but if you want, this could be asynchronous. And how do I make RxJS asynchronous? With the last part of the talk, schedulers. Let me drink one second. Schedulers, it's a feature that is super powerful because not only allow us to work with um, synchronous and asynchronous, but with a couple of new f of, of features uh, that we're going to see in, in, in a second. So here's the dev definition from Andre Stoltz, one of the core contributors of RxJS. So schedulers in RxJS are things that control the order of the event emission uh, to observers and the speed of those event emission. So if we forget about this one for a second, let's focus on these two sentences, order and speed. So with schedulers, they, you, you start seeing how that they are pretty powerful. I can control um, the order and, and the speed at the, at the same time. That's quite nice. So this is another e e example uh, that it's using three different schedulers. They are called async scheduler, queue scheduler, and ASAP scheduler. Those scheduler schedulers are, are available from RxJS itself. Um, the code here is written in a way, creating three different observables, that I'm voluntarily creating a race condition to find out which is the fastest. So which is the one that is going to re re return immediately, which is synchronous, which is asynchronous. This is pretty much an e e experiment. I'm using the merge. Um, the merge function here, provided by RxJS as, as well, which allow me to have all the streams merge together and let's race them. Let's see who, who's going to win. So the winner is Q. The winner is Q because Q is the default one. Q is the asynchronous, uh, sorry, is the synchronous one. And it actually arrived before the subscribe console log, which is here after everything. If you can see it, it's at the bottom of everything. So once all of this run, after the subscribed, I'm going to get ASAP first and then a async. So we know which is the order. So Q is a synchronous one. And then we have ASAP, which is slightly faster than async. And uh, But schedulers are not only this one. Schedulers are more. And uh, these are the four schedulers that are able to control the order of event emission. Q, ASAP, async, and animation frame. Q, again, works synchronously. ASAP works more or less has a promise resolved then. And uh, async works internally as a set interval in terms of speed. And animation frame, instead, is something that you should use when you're dealing with animation, because it uses internally the re request animation frame. So in this case, we are, totally, uh, we are talking about front, 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 front end with request an, an animation frame. But all of these actually control just the order of demand emission. We didn't talk about uh, the speed so far. So the speed is something that is controlled by the fifth of the gang, 
uh, which is called virtual time. What is virtual time? Virtual time is a way to virtualize the, the time, or if you want, to bend the, the, the time. So I've got last e example, I promise, is, is, is going to be short. So this is our virtual time. I need to restart this thing on, on the right. Whoops, it looks or, or, or horrible. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Clear, no demand. Virtual time scheduler. Okay, cool. So something happened here. We are we have like a weird countdown going going on. And on the left hand side, in this example, we have a bunch of code. I don't want you to focus that that much, but the idea is that we have an interval function. That means that this is the the wrong one. Uh, we have an interval function which is basically emitting one event each second, and then I have, I am piping with a take that it's saying, let's take the first 3,600 events. What does that, that mean? This is a very weird way to count all the seconds into one minute. It's not really efficient, not really beautiful, but it's very powerful as an e e example. If you see the code running on, on the right, we have to wait an hour in order to have all of this completing, compl completed. So how can I test something like, like, like this? Is my unit test going to wait an hour in order to, for this one to, to, to finish? No, no, no way. So that's, why, that's when we should use the virtual time, time scheduler. And virtual time scheduler is available in the library, so I can import virtual time scheduler required from RxJS. And then I'm going to initialize, I'm going to create a scheduler with new virtual time scheduler. And how do I use a scheduler? Uh, in particular, a scheduler that's related to the time. I have to pass that scheduler to each of the components that involve time. So which components, which functions I, I, am, am I using? I'm using interval and take. So interval, is it dependent with, with time? Yes, because we, we are sending one event per, per second. So the second parameter is going to be the scheduler. Take, as I told you before, just take the first 3,600 3, events that are coming through. But takes do doesn't really care about if those events are coming all in once or just one per time. Take is about the amount of events. So take is time independent, so I don't need to pass the, the scheduler to, to that. And the last but not least thing that I need to do is I need to run scheduler.flush. And as soon as I do flush, and I'm going to save in a, a second right now, you will see that on our weird countdown on, on, on the right, it's broken. Line four, ah, because the compiler doesn't like random letters. So you can see on the right, we actually did bend the, the time. We actually reduced the, the, the time to nothing because the virtual time scheduler was telling us the internals of the library do not use the real time, but just use a fake time. And if all the elements that are uh, using time uh, are using the same scheduler. That works beautifully. You can test everything that is time sensitive in a matter of millisecond. So going back to this, this, this one, we made it. I know it was painful at some point. I've seen some yawning, but thanks for staying with me. And I want to leave you with um, with an, uh, an, an idea. This is a talk that could be applied to something else. And uh, the disassemble thing is something that works for me and hopefully for someone else in order to understand how things are working behind the, the scene. So let's start taking things apart to understand what's going on. And while doing that, let's go the, uh, let's uh, do the next step. Let's reinvent it. Let's try to face the kind of challenges that people that wrote this, this library had to face. I'm not going to rewrite the whole library, but rewriting this one, you can start seeing why we are not rewriting libraries, because they are cool, but we don't know which problems they are solving. And if you reinvent one, you start to grasp the idea of why they are solving, the, how they are solving, and which problems they are solving. 
during this, this process, you are going to learn a lot. And by learning, you don't need to put a timer to remember, oh, I need to learn something. That's going to get for, 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 for free when you investigate what's inside and especially when you re rebuild it. And once you've done all the steps, share it. Let's share it with, uh, with someone else. So this one could be applied to React, to Webpack, to Angular, to anything. And uh, this could be a, a useful way to uh, reason about new libraries and new, new, new things in general. So disassemble, reinvent, learn, and most importantly, share. Thank you very much.